very much for joining us on the Modern Jobs Let's Check. This is Mark. And if you're watching for the first time, we always stream to LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Of course, you have to go to my pages to get those uh, to get the stream. But you're probably watching anyway, so what difference does it make? But you can also watch the replay through those areas as well. Uh, joining me this week is Kelly Shields. Hey. How are you, Kelly? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Well, I'm even happier that you're here with me. And Damien's going to be with us in a few minutes as soon as soon as he's able to, you know, able to get in the way. I guess Restream has changed the way people are able to log in. So if you use Restream, you haven't used in a while, test it out before you get on the air. It may be a little bit tricky. For me, it was no problem, the user, the main user. But if you're going to be a guest on someone's show, do a test run. That's just a little for the rest of you. For those of you who are in the chat, chime in, please. I know Friday afternoon tends to be one of those where people People are kind of halfway clocking out or they kind of listen to the show like they do the radio. So, you know, there may not be as many in the chat until we really get us going. So, as you know, we do as much job search career advice as possible. And we're glad to uh, stop what we're doing here to answer what you're talking about in the chat. So we thank you very much. Kelly is an attorney. We love it. Get one of the really high live types in here. So, uh, welcome to the show, Kelly. We're glad that you're able to join us. Let's jump in into a question. And, like I said, Damien's going to join us at any point. You know his story. He is the OG in this space. He's been doing it since 1992. He's helped more than 10,000 people uh, find jobs through his nationally recognized nonprofit professionals in transition, which, Kelly, he calls it PIT every now and then. So if you hear him use that acronym, that's what he's talking about. He's not saying that you are eyes of the PIT. So here we go. So here we go. You know, there's a lot of myths that uh, I love seeing dying during the pandemic. And I'll start it off by saying one myth, I think, is that people thought that they can just uh, willingly start and start a job search and get results right away. Mm. And I think the pandemic kind of ushered in the idea that when there's a lot of, lot of competition and there's a lot of people in the field, the competition goes up. That means there's more applicants per, uh, per application. So that's the myth that's always existed. And, and many of us have been talking about for many years. What's the myth that you have loved seeing die uh, during the pandemic about job search? Now, I'm going to give you my pet peeve myth here on this. And okay. I think it's actually still around and even we're seeing it play, but yeah. I'd like to encourage it to die, which is yeah. just that, great, just walk away from everything you know and just find your passion and yeah. the passion will follow. And, yeah. you know, I want people to be passionate about their work. I want I love to help them find that, but that's just advice that, you know, especially in a situation, especially, you know, there's a lot of competition going on right now. And it takes, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about more things than just that to really find fulfillment and find the right fit for you. So, um, yeah, I would like to encourage that one to like, you know, die towards, towards like pulling the plug on it. Right, right. No. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny you should mention that. And you'll probably love the book. Uh, that's going to be coming out. It's called Unfollow Your Passion. Have you heard that? It's going to be released later in December, and I'm actually going to be talking to the author on one of my other shows, uh, Terry Trespicio is mm -hmm. her name and you everybody half of everybody knows her because of her ted talk and the other half because she's been speaking and has appeared nationally all over the place uh but basically yeah i think passion well, nobody's not saying stop being passionate and that's right. one of the things that when people because i agree with you completely i've been saying for years in fact i've been saying it i think i stopped saying it four or five years ago that you know i think the idea of following your passion alone yeah. is not uh is not an accurate bit of advice i think yeah. when you follow your passion if you find the things you're passionate or if you find something become passionate about it yeah. 
to accelerate your your and help you fuel your results but i don't think the follow your passion really does a whole lot because it's a it's like you know uh i don't know you could probably relate to many other things but you know yeah the whole passion thing i'm glad that was kind of on life support anyway before <laughs> since the pandemic you know <laughs> because a lot of us started to say this whole thing that's not a, that's not that's not a strategy that's a that's a that's a encouragement when i say yay that doesn't give me any advice that just cheers you on and i think that's kind of one of those things yeah, it's kind of hard to leave people in a situation where you, you're not giving them anything they can actually do with the advice. And it's like, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm happy to see that one go and let people like develop passion and like find things that like interest them and engage them in their strengths and, you know, sector. Yep. But yep. yeah. And I, I'm glad too, as well, is that people also, what exposed the pandemic exposed is that people can the job of autopilot mm. that you know you know they're able to apply to a whole bunch of jobs and get some kind of result though that's existed for years now uh i think the pandemic has exposed it for it be uh you've got to be a whole lot more thoughtful about your approach in whatever job search but i'm glad some of the positive things have there's exposed like networking is really just in the connecting and engaging. And also I hope that mixed with what needs to die is the fact that, you know, just because you connect with someone uh, doesn't give you a license to bug them to death. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, I'm enough of an extrovert that I enjoy the networking process and just the conversation process. But yeah, I, so much, you know, frustration and disappointment mm -hmm. has been fueled by this, oh, I just need to apply to a bunch of jobs. And, you know, it's not a smart, efficient, strategic way. It's just a way that has led to a lot of people feeling bad about themselves and not seeing the results that they want. So I'm really glad that the pandemic has shed more light on that and on the importance of things like building real connections maybe yes. that's more than a one single one-time conversation and somebody that you then hit up for favors for yeah i wait months intentionally unless of course this works if you have a podcast is when you ask you get new get you get somebody to connect with and you invite them give you're automatically offering value which kind of changes the rules slightly uh although again it depends on the person and it depends on what your goals actually are and uh i don't ask everybody in fact i it, it takes a while uh for the most part because people often often offer me guests and said that's great i'll connect with them that doesn't mean they get to come on the show automatically and wow. i'm particularly my podcast the live streams are a different animal mm -hmm. uh because it's new and it's new for a lot of people i find that people don't mind talking behind the screen without a video but in front of a video there have been people i was surprised that were scared to talk in front of a video and i think that's the way for a lot of job seekers a lot of some of their fear in doing some of the video interviewing is yeah. that they are they face that fear of of being wrong or looking wrong now yeah. so it can, it's already bad enough when you walk into a room of strangers that day. now uh you know you're not even talking to a real person for the first few rounds perhaps because those first few rounds are is the video interview and then maybe behavioral assessment and maybe another type of interview sometimes the people who've had personality interviews which i think is wow. very interesting to yeah. do for for a video interview but no less that's what it is and then maybe you get a chance to talk to a person if you make it past those rounds so you know there's all kinds of things and i think people need to try to understand each approach uh, an employer wants you to take for you to be successful or to get through those rounds and just try to get some clarity out of it. That's your better approach and to be more thoughtful instead of to be blind and yeah. 
You know, you're not crashing into a snowbank. You're, you know, you're interviewing to work with somebody every day. Um, yeah, I think that's great. Um, that makes me curious. Like, what's something that that you found to be really helpful in sharing with people who are facing those kind of fears and uncertainties about, oh, this is, you know, via video, this is this whole new animal. Yeah. The more you know about a company, mm. the more you're able to leverage LinkedIn mm -hmm. to a great degree. It tells you a lot about companies and uh, you know, what they think. If you connect with the people and ask them who, what what actually happens and the kind of culture that they have, and you know, there's so many places where you could even view conversations that people have. Uh, there are threads all over the place when you're on LinkedIn. You can go to the company page, look up an employee, and maybe find somebody that you have a second connection with. Uh, because very often it's the connection of a connection of a connection. A connection is where the sweet spot is, not just that person asks, and that's the person you're going to ask. Right. Um, I love I love that a lot. Yeah, one of my favorite things to help people with is yeah, like actually learning about this company that you're interested in, and having those actual conversations with someone is really important but i also love yeah, seeing where they might have some public conversations or some public information there and yeah. i've been talked to you even i think talked about checking even youtube for information oh, yeah which kind of brings up in a and you bring up an excellent point because i think youtube and um if you're trying to look up like your boss mm -hmm. who might be a subject matter expert you'd be surprised who ends up being on a podcast like, like I do freelance writing a fair, a fair amount. And when I want to know about the editor or somebody that's in the leadership and to find out what kind of content they actually really like within the niche, then I would go, I, I've gotten like one client that I had, I found her through a podcast and find out exactly what kind of content she liked. And she was pretty explicit and, you know, forthcoming about what she liked. So, you know, I thought that was just, it was phenomenal. So yeah, YouTube and try to find people that you're going to connect with, see if they're on YouTube and see if they talk about their work. You'd be surprised or it doesn't matter whether they talk about their work. If they're talking about their passion and they have a passion, uh, then you can connect that way. Say, you know, you, I can do or I do this too or whatever the lead line is going to be. You have you have something in common with that person, which is gold. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's it's so much is about finding connection and fit. And I mean. I'm big on, as I know you are too, you want people to find the right jobs, not just yes. the jobs they can get. Yes. So yes. that's a great, I think that those are wonderful strategies to help you find and, you know, create those kind of um, serendipitous moments of connection. That and, and, and you inferred to another pit peeve is the idea of the dream job. Oh, yeah. That's that's a pet peeve. Now, I don't mind people having in mind their dream job and because I think they exist. If I knew that, for instance, if I knew you uh, uh, and I knew you working where I would want to work, that's a dream job. Now, will it be a dream job after a year or two? That will be a very that's another interesting conversation. But wow. I think what happens and, you know, I know some of my peers and, and our colleagues are going to get me for this, but I think we use that as a marketing bait. Mm. I hate to say tool. <laughs> I'm getting in trouble. I know I am, <laughs> but it's true. You know, I think, yeah, okay. I don't say anything much about when people push their spiel about having a, a dream job. But one thing is, is that people go in thinking, how many dream jobs you're going to have? Because you may change in two or three years. Yeah. Is it going to be another dream job or is it going to be something else? Now, maybe there might be a dream career where you've dreamed of something since you were a child. 
-hmm. and we can almost use passion and dream kind of interchangeably in this context is that, yeah, I've been, you know, my, uh, one of my best friends growing up, it retired as a colonel in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And he was always about military army wore the jackets with the with with the rankings on them you know as a kid you don't know any better and it was really big around time because you know i'm about to age myself we grew up in the vietnam war so then it was truly not to say not military is now my son it was in the air force in the air force vet but I think it was really real then. So it was really something that you can touch and feel and that the environment really kind of bolstered up. That's kind of a dream job and that's a kind of a passion in a sense. But, you know, these days you're telling a 30 year old who's been through a couple of jobs. Oh, your dream job. <laughs> and, and only and only career professionals do I should shouldn't say that, but I shouldn't say only, but a lot of them do that and say, I'll help you find your dream job. I'm like I mean, mm-hmm. I feel like I don't mind the phrase dream job so much as long here is Damien. Oh, is he here? Great. Hey Damien. <laughs> Man, I gotta tell you, the goblins got me. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I could have carved an entire pumpkin in the entire time that it's taken to, uh, to get here. I do apologize. I've tried 50 million different ways to, uh, to get here, but I they am just delighted the way people to be here. In. They changed it because it happened to Jack on, on Wednesday. Uh, the way people come into it and the link you do, they have you. I don't know if you had to sign in every time, but they must have done something security wise to do that. If you're new, you don't know. So like Kelly was able to get right on in and said, wait a second. Somebody who's been doing it for a while, it looks different. It's like, oh, wait a second. This is different than unless, of course, you have an account like I do. Then that's a different story. But Kelly, Damien, Damien, Kelly. Uh, <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So, so Damien, uh, we were just talking about myths we love seeing die. Mm-hmm. Pandemic started. Did you have one? Uh, did I have you know, uh, that? You know, what? we've loved seeing just. What say that again? Oh, nothing. You broke up. What What, what I think you were asking me is oh, about a, a myth. Because my thing, if I disappear, like we're because of weather, the 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 weather gods are getting out of my Wi-Fi now. But uh, yeah, I I was just saying, you know, what what you know, myth you've seen job search wise. You love seeing die during this time that, yes, this is, is about time that we killed this thing that's been around for years. Yeah, I, I think a myth that has become very real to anybody who is job searching is that you must network to find a job. No longer can you just addle along and submit with a hope, wish, and a prayer to online positions. And uh, in my experience, 90% of your time should be spent networking because that's where the jobs are. And Mm -hmm. if you don't do that, if you don't have a strong LinkedIn profile, all of those things that, that go into having a strong digital presence. And so seeing that, that myth, die for many people who didn't believe it has probably been the most interesting thing that I, I've seen come out of uh, COVID. Yeah, I'm still kicking and screaming that they don't want to do all that connecting 
Um, mm-hmm. And I, I find that really fascinating. In fact, I try not to even talk to those people anymore. I try to convince them because I think it's really, when we have economic downturns, that's when it, this, it was exposed to last economic downturn when we had the mm-hmm. Great Recession where people were trying to find jobs and they were trying to find it, go around the system. And back then I understand that we were closer to 2000, 2001 when you could go when there weren't as many people going to the career builders and monsters of that time. Now people are trying to do that with Indeed. It doesn't work then. But back then it worked where you can apply to 50 jobs and you can get 10 people to give you a call. Uh, That was cool then. But even then though, there were some faulty uh, things about it that I didn't particularly care for. If I remember one was Mm -hmm. the fact that you're a stranger to the stranger. So therefore, you know, um, you know, you're getting somebody that, hasn't tried uh, getting referrals as much as they did, but still referrals were being heralded as the, the end all be all in a lot of ways. It kind of still is the key to get into another company. Right. And, you know, there is a, a top expert uh, in terms of uh, job searching and all of the process, a very wise sage in the United States. Well, now internationally that I have the pleasure of working with every week. And um, I'm not going to get this right, but basically the uh, outcome of of COVID, and Mark has said this many weeks, is that uh, job searching is a lifestyle. It's something that, you know, you're doing in one form, shape or another throughout your entire career. I mean, you're either compiling quantifiable, measurable benefits that you can put on your LinkedIn profile or you're conscientiously networking both on the inside of your company and on the outside of your company, but networking with a purpose, not to just collect business cards, Mm -hmm. but to build those invaluable relationships that ultimately will bring you position after position after position. But um, I really like what that um, wise sage has uh, taught me. Um, What do you think? (laughs) I don't know what you think, but, you know, it's, I I really really think when you have, um, you know, yeah, it, 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 you're going to pivot faster. You're going to be ready. Quickly. You don't have to get your ready. In fact, you almost get your resume. It's going to get me uh, <laughs> when the resume writers are going to get me. You can kind of, that could be your last resort is resort and all the information and intel you gather a resume ready Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's almost like uh go ahead mark we lost you and you're not officially unless of course (laughs) this connection It, it likes if you're talking but you guys didn't talk while I get my connection. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, like I love what you're saying. I love the idea of job searching as I, I, I agree with that um, because, you know, what, where I went, where my head went when you were talking about that is one of the biggest holdups, hangups I see clients having with the idea of networking is that oh, wait, I'm just talking to this person just to get something for me. And it feels really icky and they're yep. very comfortable. Yep. And I think it's really helpful just to remember that, you know, this is a two-way street. It's mutually beneficial. And even if you can't help them today, in five years, you might be in a position where suddenly you know someone that they want to talk to. This is definitely something that, you know, especially if you go into it with the attitude that you are, willing to give, not just get, 
Um, I think that can make it a lot more comfortable and often a lot more successful because people do tend to respond to that kind of openness and authenticity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, Kelly, can you hear the, me now? the real. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. her to to kind of. Uh, I like, you know, the idea. Um, you have a what they call a career clarity uh, method of uh, of uh, approaching your coaching, right, Kelly? Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I think that those are some. This, what we're talking about is really nothing new to you because this is kind of with your coaching they don't have it but, uh, people really have but they need further clarity they're both that they have no idea what the next job because maybe they've given up on their You know, we're cutting in and out a little bit, but I think I understand enough of the question, which I think you're asking, um, you know, am I finding that people really don't know or do they have maybe more clarity or ideas than they think they do? And the answer is kind of both. I think that we all know, there, there are things we all know on some level that maybe we're not consciously aware of, or maybe we haven't given ourselves permission to acknowledge, or maybe we just need some help to pull out of us. Um, but yeah, there, I think there are also people who are coming in and the way our education system is set up, like we're just kind of taught to great, just it doesn't matter what you're interested in, just achieve. And we're not really taught how to figure out, oh, what's actually energizing to me? And what's this job gonna look like in the real world? And so get some, you get people in all sorts of walks of life who just kind of fell into a job or picked a career path that made sense based on what they were good at in school, perhaps, or that everyone said, oh, this is a great field to go into if you want job security, if you're going to have jobs around. Those aren't bad things. Those are, those are great pieces of information to know. But um, if, you, know, you may not be going in with as much self-awareness and as much clarity about, you know, what you actually want to bring to a role, what skill, what skills you actually enjoy using, not just that you're rewarded because you can do well in. Um, for mm -hmm. my example, for me is always, I'm a great legal writer. I always got very well rewarded for that. I freaking despise legal writing. It is boring, <laughs> boring, boring. <laughs> and building a career around it, okay, I, I can keep some job security, but at some point, if you want to be doing something that you actually enjoy doing. So I think helping people dig into, you know, what they need for their personality and how that can match up with an organizational culture and believing they can find that and getting clarity on like, oh, what, what strengths do you actually have that you actually want to be using and like showing up in the world with and growing? Um, I think breaking it down to smaller questions help pe helps people you know, realize more of what they do already know, and that helps them put those pieces together to figure out, oh, like, this is the kind of pivot I'm going to make. Or even, oh, if I just make this little tweak or switch the jobs or, you know, to a different company with a different culture, here's how I can have a lot more satisfaction. Mm -hmm. um, and I have learned having, and, and Mark is going to laugh, but in my career, um, I went from pots and pans because I worked my way up through uh, what is now Macy's to a senior buyer. He's shaking his head from pots and pans to mops, brooms and brushes, which is how I got down here working for a division of Sara Lee to what was then my area of expertise, Kelly, which was bras and panties. <laughs> Now, the reason why I say that is, you know, we're, we're talking about dream jobs or we were and making pivots. I have learned that if you can pivot towards your your God given skills, you know, your your natural skill set. And in working with folks, I am so surprised at how far away people are sometimes in terms of their position versus their ability. And they go into work every day and they constantly 
swim upstream. And to me, the, the great resignation, which we've talked about before, doesn't surprise me a bit because people have had a chance to kind of reflect on, you know, where they are, what they're doing next, especially if they've been touched by uh, COVID, a family member or, or what have you. So I, I certainly hear and agree with what you're saying, you know, uh, uh, about helping people either pivot a little or helping people pivot a, a, a lot. Uh, and if they don't, then they're kind of like dooming themselves to a, a job that they're going to hate, you know, the, the, the rest of their lives. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> Career coaches and resume writers, they don't know who are kind of stuck and don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. I think one of the challenges in colleges as they serve, um, you know, the younger people, younger folks, is that they are often stuck and, and they, but they often also don't also connect with the, the truth career. They end up going with the default career because their parents had mm -hmm. orientated that's what they should be or that they're all doing it and this is what you would do. But that's not necessarily what you end up doing. And so I guess in, in, the, in this, essentially when you talk about building or helping people clarify their careers, um, one of the weaknesses as an industry in the career industry and in coaching, and I think it's not a natural formulation of just not knowing what to do, but some of the with clients and helping them be clearer. And that's what I like what Lisa does. And I don't think, I don't know if we tried to get Lisa on the show, show Damien. Kelly got her training was from Lisa as a ah. clarity coach. Uh, I'm saying that even once in a row, much less three times. But I think, <laughs> I think it's, I think there is a spot for those who can walk with people and try to help them become very clear with their career goals. And I would even say even older person who, you know, trying to stay away from a regular job uh, that, you know, we get stuck uh, and we're older because we've tried a bunch of things and we still don't still don't know where we are. I was need to find on the last end, what I love doing what I, Uh, being able to write and do the coaching necessarily anymore except for a few months out of the year but other than that i love writing about it and i think helping bringing clarity through stories and from different people different backgrounds and mm -hmm. also using today news and and evolve spectrum that i could tell those stories to help bring clarity that way so i think there will be more of those those conversations if in the college uh career services that they should do that dirty work and learn how to do that dirty work no matter what the method is necessarily the method is important in as much as doing work and helping people do the deep work because mm -hmm. there are college students who mm -hmm. still come out who don't know what a LinkedIn profile of that is. A few of them figured it out, but most of them haven't. Kelly, I see you reacting in ways that, that resonates with me. I agree with you. I just know that's so true. And, you know, I, I think there is, I think I do think college career counselors are in a difficult situation because it can be hard to work with someone who's a student and has never had, you know, a full-time real job. Like they've maybe had right. a summer job. So mm -hmm. they really might need some more life experience to start figuring out what's important to them. But mm -hmm. still, I agree with you. There are so many fundamentals. Like, yes, everyone coming out of college should know how to have a LinkedIn profile. And mm -hmm. it'd be great. I, I would love to see colleges having their resources and people who have skills. I don't think that, I, I agree. I don't think that it's about one particular methodology for doing this, but it's helping them know dig into the journey work and help them really get important to them because all of that 
all the work about, you know, that makes everything else so much easier. Once you've got clarity, you can talk about yourself and you know, networking conversations, casual conversations, interviews, and tell a cohesive story. You know how to show up on a resume. You know how to present yourself in your LinkedIn profile. Just mm-hmm. knowing, knowing what's important to you and what you want to present to the world and having clarity about that. And it will also get you to some place where you're going to thrive. Yeah, I agree on the dream job part too. I don't think any job is totally, I mean, a job is, there's no such thing as do, you know, what you do work, you'll, love, you'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> it's marketing. That's, that's, why I, that's why I run with, it's marketing because it's not a, yeah. it, it, it's not a real tangible thing when you really think about it. But I know I'm going to get some questions later. And uh, I think I've said enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm in enough hot water already. I know it's coming. But I do want to ask you guys, <laughs> right? Uh, there is something I want to ask both of you. Uh, I'm no longer considered, even to play one on live streams, a career practitioner. I don't do this in my private life as much, at least for money. But it, as career practitioners, do you that there's a benefit in playing up or playing down or maybe a little neutrality with the great registration. I say the great registration, but it's a great resignation. That's what I wrote. That's what I meant. Uh, And the fact that, you know, a lot of people that like, if it's a thing, to go to and then over here or it's over when really it's more of really a mindset but i think it also exposed the fact that you know that the way that companies treat people mm-hmm. can no longer act the same way amongst the other issues that come along with it and that's not the but we're seeing a lot of that lately uh damien i'm going to start with you since since uh, you've spoken the, for this particular show uh do you find yourself downplaying it do you use it uh, or do you use it uh, do you bring it up at all with clients or do they bring it with you any perspective on that sure um i read an article the other day that said uh in a recent poll over 40 percent of all of those currently in the workforce will resign or are thinking about resigning from their current job. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's a real thing. Uh, and I think you know, last week or the week before, uh, I sent that article, uh, or maybe not to you, Mark, but uh, about uh, how in the blue collar space now, you know, you're seeing lots of union activity and uh, a lot of leveraging saying, you know, we're not getting paid enough. Yada yada yada. A little bit about it, though. Right. So it, it is a real phenomena. But when it comes to how I counsel those who turn to me, uh, I'm neutral. And what I mean by that is, if you've made that decision in your life that enough is enough, or I feel stuck, or my talent isn't being used. That's really a a personal decision that you make that then creates that drive that you need to make some pretty tough decisions and then build a plan, an action plan around all of the different steps that you have to go through, whether you're going to have a a visible job search or one that's kind of underground, the, the different steps you know, strong LinkedIn profile, yada, 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 um, all have to be done. But it is the candidate who comes to me from my perspective, which I try to keep neutral so that their needs can surface and we Mm -hmm. can uh, address. But when it comes to uh, commentary or interacting with the the media or when others ask me, uh, I, I do talk about the great resignation as being a phenomena that I don't think is going to go away uh, anytime soon. Mm. Interesting. Kelly? You know, I 100% agree. And I think with my 
individual clients, I would not push, I mean, we want to figure out what's right for them and their needs. And that's independent of what's going on with the great resignation. Mm -hmm. Now, where I do think it can be helpful with individual clients is helping them realize that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. that there's something unique about them, that there's not something wrong with them for being dissatisfied, not being happy, even though you know, maybe they, hey, they at least have a job and didn't get laid off. I mean, I have a lot of clients who have a lot of guilt about that. And, um, you know, helping them realize the discontent that's kind of going around can help normalize that. But really the question for my clients is what's the right decision for you? What are the right steps we need to take for you to, you know, get to where you want to be? Um, but yeah, also, I, I, I do think it's that, yes, again, in articles and commentary and conversations, yeah, I think it's a great, I do agree. I think phenomenon is the right word. I think it provides the space to have really important conversations about what's going on in the working world and, you know, maybe what things need to change. Good. Mm. Yeah. Kelly, Kelly, do you, what advice have you been giving that you find that you're on repeat, that you keep sharing and telling uh, your clients constantly? That it seems like you've told every client that you've had. What, what was that one piece of advice that you, you think that? Oh, my goodness. You know, I think there's probably a lot of it. You know, we've kind of, we've touched on this earlier, but it's really Please lean into the people you know personally and professionally mm -hmm. and talk to them and share with them and ask for their help. If you are, you know, even thinking about like starting to dip your toe in the water of exploring, you know, what your next step might be, let alone if you're actively in the middle of, I, you know, if you don't have a job and you're actively trying to find one. So many people I work with are so resistant, both, you know, to meeting new people to create networking conversations, but also reaching out to their existing network, letting them know that, you know, asking for connections. And then almost inevitably, when they finally reach out to their connections, I've had clients within an hour or two get two connections, like, like get connected to two people within a company that they want to talk to, um, or finally be able to start having new conversations. It's really just trying to encourage them, like, yeah, like, you're not you're you're not an island. Let's reach out to everyone you know. You don't have to like lay your heart and every problem that's going out that's going on on the table. But talk to people. They know people. You don't know who they know, and don't assume they don't know someone who can help you. Yeah, I find that people don't network very. Uh, instead, of, you know, follow the chain. The people you know and the people they know, and the people they know. Because I find, you know, it's my show. He says people really spots when they get to the third ties. It's a friend of a friend of a friend. Then trying to meet a lot of people. And although it's good that you're meeting a lot of people, then now you to, uh, you're, you'll get better results by the people letting people who are know you and let them even heard of and that might be more readily to, as that second tier as opposed to these first tier people now you've got to show them how you're valuable they'll even respond then that's not the true cost of reward but uh damien i think i think i'll agree that networking like you first stated people spend 90 percent of their time but i think people do benefit more networking deeper than absolutely absolutely build those ties maintain those relationships um, i still talk to the uh original connection that called me and said there's a position across the street at the other mm -hmm. department store that never hit the paper it hadn't even been posted in the within the department store and here i was interviewing uh two days later in the old days in the bar down in the bottom of where the uh, department store was with a double doers 
Uh, you don't do that anymore. I know, right? So, wow, I mean, I that, that term. That might, that might happen in the legal world occasionally, but yeah. Ah. Yeah. It, but going back. Thing. Go ahead, Dam Go ahead, Damien. But I, I was going to say, going back to what you were saying, you know, the the your deep network that you consistently keep in touch with and help uh, because, uh, you know, like Kelly said, you don't know when you're going to be in a position to help others until they ask. But if you have framed yourself as uh, a go-to person when a person needs help and then you provide that help, there is a, a halo effect that's created that one, the person that you've helped always remembers, and two, that halo effect then extends to others that are, like in this case, within the industry, and your good reputation continues to grow because people know that you have integrity and a willingness to help with no strings attached. And the no strings attached is really important because we're networking kind of gets that slick and greasy feel is when people feel that the only reason why, why they're in it is for people mm -hmm. to be able to help them. And it's not a reciprocal or maintained uh, relationship. Yeah, it's important to uh, important facts. I appreciate both of you guys giving your It's the weather goblins. Ah. <laughs> Wrap it up here soon. Going on that people should know about, are, are you going to appear on a cast, a TV show, um, you know, anything that you've got coming up that you like people to know about? Um, you know, I will accept any offers to be on any TV shows if anyone out there would like me. But, um, you know, the thing I'm most <laughs> excited about right now actually is not an appearance. It's um, I just launched a quiz on my website, kellyshield.com, K-E-L-L-E-Y. Okay. I wanted to make things a little more complicated. But um, it's a should I stay or should I go quiz? And, uh, you know, one of those people who's just mm. like, I don't know. Um, I think it can be really helpful. And it's, and it's you know, a fun way to think about it. So that's, that's what I'm most excited about right now. Oh, good. Okay. So good. do you call it the clash quiz? The clash I'm sorry. Quiz. That's a musical <laughs> reference that may, that may have gone over your head. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Some people may know what I'm talking about. Then my little, <laughs> Damien. Oh, my, you know, knowledge rather than age, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Damien, people should know about. Yeah, uh, probably the most exciting thing is uh, Professionals in Transition, the support group that I founded, is going to go back to in-person meeting uh, on uh, November the 11th. So there should be a, a significant amount of regional uh, media coverage to uh, help and also, we're going to do a, a, a massive um, outreach to the uh, it, within the region without alienating those that have come to us through Zoom. So it's going to be, for me, like kind of juggling cats, but I'm going to try to do Zoom and in-person at the same time on uh, November the 11th. So that's going to be a, lots of fun. Um uh, and then yeah, I, I think I is. mentioned. <laughs> and then uh, something that I'm that I've learned that that both of you might be very interested in is, I have found that by um, answering reporters' queries that lie outside our area of expertise still work out very well because you get that that link back to your uh, website. And I only say that because there is a uh, an article that's coming up in. Uh, 
Consumer Reports, uh, talking about the issues that I've uh, faced flipping from uh, a, uh, a company paid medical plan to uh, Medicare. And then there's an other article that's coming out. I don't know if it's Parade, but uh, it's an article about your earliest childhood memory. And mm -hmm. these, these were two responses where I, I wasn't flippant, but it was just like a, three or four sentences and off to the races, figuring I'll never hear back. But in fact, um, I I did. And the only reason why I mentioned that is, you know, the, the more avenues that we as a community use to reach out to those that uh, might be looking for our support and services, the... Uh, the better off we're uh, going to be. And sometimes you may use kind of off the wall strategies, but when they work, it's, uh, it's very interesting. So it'll, it'll be kind of uh, fun to uh, see how that works out. And then uh, currently there's a, uh, an article that uh, Gwen Moran wrote that is uh, in uh, AARP. So, mm -hmm. That's all the good stuff I have going on. Good deal. Good deal. I am, uh, boy, you brought up, a, there's a lot of things going on. Um, I, if I'm going to figure out one thing to say is I want to talk about our guest list that's coming up here for the next few weeks. Um, we don't have a guest for next week, but the rest of the year we do. We have Sunal Ball. We have Deborah Matthews coming on on the 19th. Uh, the 26th, we will not have a show on uh, November 26th because that's Thanksgiving weekend. And really, who's going to be around to watch us talk about this kind of stuff anyway? Uh, uh, Tegan Bartos is going to be joining us as well. Uh, on the 10th, it will be uh, Paula Christensen, who was on my other show, The Job Seeker Nation, Nicolette Barrett, we're doing that very special show on the 17th with. So we've got a calendar full. That is pretty much the rest of the year uh, mm -hmm. for the show. So uh, we've all we've even started filling up the January calendar, which is a very good thing. So a uh, bunch of things going on there. We'll be have, I'll be having another podcast mm -hmm. episode here coming up on the November 9th. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, Melinda Emerson is one of my guests. Uh, she is America's small business lady. I mean, literally, she is America's small business lady. Now you can Google her and her name will come up. Uh, she's a former New York uh, Times columnist as well as uh, has been featured on every single platform that has been known to man. So uh, that's going to be interesting. Got a couple of other things going on with that particular show. So really excited what's going on. You guys have been watching very quietly this time with no chat in the chat room. Uh the Modern Job Search Checklist. We always stream to LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter every single Friday that we possibly can. Again, we won't have a show on the Friday of Thanksgiving. No, we'll be, we will be taking also a Christmas break as well. We'll talk more about that later. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us here on our show. And a shout out to Lee Lewis Miller, who Uh, Lisa is a friend of mine that on her podcast. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you all. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. We're watching very quietly. Uh, watch the replay and uh, you'll watch us uh, see, see our voices fall out of sync because of the weather and the <laughs> Wi-Fi issues that some of us are having. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. You guys take care.